morning, and welcome to our worship in a different way. My name is Heather, and I serve as the pastor here at the United Methodist Church in Osterville, Massachusetts, where we remain, despite our distance, together in Christ and committed to serve. This morning, I am particularly aware that the church is not the building, but rather the people. And this morning, for the safety of you and me and our community, we gather separately, but we are together in heart and mind and intention. We gather digitally to pray together, to study scripture, and hopefully to be touched and even changed by the work of the holy among, through, and within us. Some announcements before we go any further. Is it worship without announcements? We will be closed for worship and all other activities for at least two weeks as we continue to monitor the state of COVID-19 and its spread. We do this not out of fear, but rather out of faithfulness, out of our concern for you and our community. We encourage you to stay at home as much as you can, to wash your hands often and thoroughly, and to follow the guidelines of the CDC and our local and state authorities. Our building will be closed to all small groups, meetings, and events. And these next two weeks, our doors will be locked, but our hearts are open. That means we'll be finding creative ways to care for one another and to connect with one another. We will be posting more regularly and we'll be looking for ways to connect more directly by phone, text, and email. If you are at high risk and there's a way that we can support you, perhaps with groceries or picking up other necessary items, please call the church office, 508-428-2811, or contact me directly. This morning, we'll continue our journey through Lent as we step inside the story of the teacher who turned the world upside down. We put ourselves into the picture of Holy Week. For those of you who are just joining us, we are following Jesus in his last week, what we sometimes call Holy Week. We began as Jesus entered into Jerusalem with a parade of palms, a parade that drew attention to Jesus and his ministry in a dangerous way and threatened the status quo. Then we watched as Jesus went into the temple and emptied it, overturning the tables with a previously unseen anger. This week, we find him just outside the temple, teaching. That last week, or holy week, Jesus doesn't just lay low. He puts himself out there, susceptible to those who would like to trap him, susceptible to those who wish to twist his words to get him to say something damaging incriminating. He cannot turn from his vocation. He is not only a master teacher, but he is also a prophet. He is a voice of the divine. It is his ability to draw the people to his teachings that pose a threat, a challenge to the authorities. So this week, we place ourselves in the crowd to be moved and motivated, even challenged by Jesus to get a faithful perspective. I wonder, what would we hear, see, and feel if we were listening with the crowds that day? Let's listen in. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the followers of Herod, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. 
Each week, as we hear this story, we have been looking at a picture. And this week's picture is the tribute money by James Tussaud. You might check it out on our Facebook page or simply close your eyes for a moment and imagine the scene. Jesus kept showing up at the temple that week, even after the skirmish in the temple market. You'd think it would be wise for him to back off, lay low, stay out of the way, stop drawing attention to himself. Certainly, people were watching him and had been for some time. After all, People had been watching him since his birth. Remember Herod, scared of a baby? Instead of laying low, Jesus shows up and he does what he does best. He teaches. Now some Pharisees try to trap him with a carefully worded question. Is it lawful to pay taxes? Can you imagine that planning session that moment when they gather together, figuring out the perfect question designed to trap Jesus? You see, if he answers the question, no, you should not pay taxes, Jesus is risking angering the Romans. They'll arrest him, or worse. And if he says, yes, of course, pay the taxes, he risks angering the religious authorities. After all, to pay to build the Roman temple isn't that blasphemy or heresy? To pay to support your oppressors, isn't that joining their side, supporting their efforts at oppression? There is no right answer. The question has been designed that way. And yet, Jesus finds one. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to Jesus. <laughs> Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what belongs to God. It sounds simple enough, but is it? What belongs to Caesar? What belongs to our civic institutions? What are the rights and responsibilities of the government, particularly a government such as ours, by the people, for the people? And what belongs to God? Everything. You, me, all who bear the image and likeness of God, just like the denarii bears the image of Caesar. What belongs to God? All things, everything, this beloved planet, this beautiful work of creation that sustains us. I wonder, what does it mean to bear the image of God in the age of COVID-19? I don't think it's changed all that much. Made in the image of God, you and I were created to be creative, to be courageous, or as Brene Brown might put it, to live wholeheartedly. We were made by and for love. We were made to care for one another, to connect with one another, and right now, that takes creativity and intentionality. As we live into this season where love means staying apart, how will we reach out to intentionally connect with one another? I wonder, will you pick up the phone and call someone each day to find out if they're okay? Not just physically, but to check in on their hearts, their minds, their being. Will you cross the street and from a distance call out to your neighbor, I'm not coming in, but are you okay? Do you need anything? The desire to connect is strong. It's part of who and whose we are as image bearers of God. I hope that you've seen those videos from Sicily and other places around the world where people are finding creative ways to connect. People singing from windows and balconies in Sicily, finding ways to bring joy and beauty into the world even when we are separate. May we find our own ways to sing together across the distance. Will you pray with me? Holy and living God, we remember today the teachings of Jesus, and we give thanks to God for the power of his words and actions that have transformed so many lives, including ours. We remember this day those who teach and preach 
in the pursuit of right living and right relationship. We remember those in our lives who have told us the stories of Jesus, who have challenged us, who have questioned us, who have drawn us closer to you. And now, each in our own place, let us call to our mind's eye those people in our lives that need our advocacy, our presence, and our prayers. I invite you, wherever you are, to lift aloud the names or places that you would add to our prayers today, trusting that God hears them all. And then let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples then and now, a prayer that connects us across time and space. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, here's the fun part. Here's the time when we would normally take an offering. Instead, today I invite you, wherever you are, to consider in what ways God is calling you to give. Perhaps the gift you give today is the gift of staying home away from others, to protect yourself and our community. Perhaps you are called to a ministry of connection, to write cards and make phone calls to your neighbors, your family, and friends. Perhaps this is the time for you to consider online giving, to support the missions and ministries of our church. After all, the work goes on. Our staff are figuring out how to do their work from afar. If you need help, setting up your online giving, give me a call and we'll figure it out together. Perhaps this is the time when you recommit yourself to prayer or some other devotional practice. You might consider setting up a prayer station or a prayer place in your home. It could even be fun. A cozy nook with a Bible, a journal, a candle. You might watch our Facebook page later this week for some try this at home ideas for prayer stations and more. Take a moment and consider, how is God inviting you to give of yourself today? Will you pray with me? Holy and living God, thank you for each and every person who is part of our community, for doctors and nurses and nursing facility staff who are caring for others at such a time as this. We give you thanks for caring neighbors who are reaching out and connecting in new ways. For that person who shared the last bottle of hand sanitizer on the shelf. For that neighbor who shared the jumbo pack of toilet paper. For the one who anonymously delivered groceries. Thank you. Thank you for all the ways you call us to connect and care for one another across distance. By phone, by text, by email and Facebook and yes, in prayer, you connect us heart to heart across all distance. You connect us in love. Holy One, in this time of contagion, we recommit ourselves to you and your love. Yet let your love be more contagious than any virus. Use us as you would to build your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Beloved, in this season of uncertainty, let us be guided by facts, not by fear. May we be faithful to the one whose image we bear. May we learn to care for one another in new, creative, and familiar ways. May we love one another from a distance, but remain connected heart to heart. May we follow Jesus, who shows us the way. Go in peace, stay in peace, knowing this, God loves you, and so do I. Amen.